All right, how long do you really need to wait in between meals before you start eating again? Whether that be for weight loss or for gut health or for SIBO or IBS or whatever it may be, is there a certain number of hours of time that you should wait until you actually eat? And it turns out there actually sort of is, and it's kind of a weirdly precise number. I'm going to be going over all of that with you in today's video. All right, guys, if you're new to my channel and you don't know who I am, my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. On my channel, I'm typically talking about the science back ways that you can feel amazing again and part of that includes figuring out exactly how long you should wait between your meals in order to eat and when we're talking about how long to actually wait between wheat wheels meals. It really comes down to this whole process called the migrating motor complex. And if you haven't heard about this before, don't feel bad. I didn't even learn it in my undergrad for nutrition. It's actually something that hasn't quite gotten a lot of attention, or at least not until very recently with this explosion of the SIBO issue or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now people are starting to pay more attention to this very essential natural process in the body. Now stimulation of the migrating motor complex or the MMC can be helpful for things like GERD or SIBO or IBS or even bloating. In fact, this migrating motor complex really is just the cleaning system within your GI tract. So it's pretty important. Now, before I jump into what the migrating motor complex is and why it's so important for gut health in general, I do want to emphasize and state that this is a natural process. This is something that occurs within your body or it should be occurring within your body on a regular basis. So especially with a lot of the videos that I talk about, really the goal is stimulation of this natural process within your body. All right, now, like I mentioned, the MMC pathway really is just the cleaning crew within your GI tract. So what it does is it's sweeping out the left behind bacterium food that's in your stomach and small intestine. And it's triggered by you not eating. So as soon as you go to eat, you actually stop this whole process in its tracks. So here's how it works. After about two to three hours and for each person, it really will depend on how long this will take depending on your own GI tract and your own GI tract health. But about two to three hours after your last meal or after the last food, <laughs> or drink that you consume, this is when the MMC pathway is triggered. So once your food has been digested, 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 that is when the migrating motor complex can get to work. The MMC pathway works in a couple different phases, but I'm just going to be breezing through these so you understand the basics of what's going on with it. Now, first, a series of contractions happens in your stomach and in your small intestine that helps to push out left behind food and bacteria, get it out of your stomach and get it out of your small intestine. So it's physically pushing that excess food and bacteria out. Now you'll also get increased gastric secretion, so meaning from your stomach, as well as from your gallbladder and pancreas. And what scientists are understanding that as is really just cleansing out your small intestine and your stomach in order to more effectively push out that bacteria and push out that left behind food. In fact, when your stomach is grumbling, I think we all know that feeling, that's actually your MMC pathway going to work. That's it, just contracting and getting that left behind food and bacteria pushed out. So one important factor of the MMC pathway is that it does help to reduce the buildup of bacteria in your stomach and in your small intestine. And you've probably heard before that bacteria is really important in your GI tract. But when we talk about this, we're mostly talking about the colon. Now in the colon, you want a good amount of gut bacteria. You actually do want to have a healthy gut flora. I mean, there's so, so, so much research behind this on how it can help with anxiety and gut health and weight loss, even just for protecting you against illness or even colon cancer. There's so much research behind good, healthy gut bacteria. Now the MMC pathway does not make it so that it gets rid of that colon bacteria rather just get rid of the bacteria that's in your small intestine and in your stomach. So those two areas are fairly sterile. There's still some amount of bacteria, but not really that much, especially when you compare it to your colon. And you may be wondering why would you want bacteria in your colon, but not in your small intestine? Now here's the thing, in your small intestine, this is where most absorption of nutrients happens. So where you actually are able to take those nutrients from the food that you just ate and absorb it into your blood supply and then use it. Now, if you had bacteria present at this time or in the small intestine, and if it were in high amounts, then you're actually going to be competing with that bacteria for absorption of those nutrients. And spoiler alert, bacteria is way better at absorbing nutrients than we are. It's much faster at it. It doesn't have a whole GI tract has to deal with. It pretty much can just take those nutrients directly from you, which is why you'll often see that people who have SIBO or some gut issues tend to have nutrient deficiencies or even things like muscle cramps. And this is typically due to the fact that the bacteria is literally leaching away those nutrients from your own body. Now it's important to keep in mind that as soon as you eat, you shut off the MMC pathway. There are other things that shut off the MMC pathway that have nothing to do with food. So if you guys want a video on that, just let me know in the comments below. But the most simple thing that does shut off your MMC pathway is just 
eating or drinking anything. Water, on the other hand, is something that scientists seem to believe doesn't inhibit the MMC pathway, so you should be good on that. But even something like sweetened tea or even keto coffee, that could inhibit your MMC pathway. Now, there's really two ways to go about this. If you're following intermittent fasting and you're not having anything during your fasted period or you're waiting a good amount of time before you go to sleep and after you eat your last meal, then you're still getting that MMC pathway stimulation. Or if you aren't using something like intermittent fasting, then that's where you want to make sure you have at least three hours, 45 minutes, three to four hours really of not eating anything. This specific number of three hours and 45 minutes, like I mentioned, will greatly vary for each person, but you're pretty much safe if you wait that three hours, 45 minutes or four hours. And if you do experience anything like IBS or bloating, SIBO or any other type of gut issue, then stimulating your MMC pathway might be a really good idea for you, at least to get rid of any possible contributing factors that could happen from that buildup of left behind food and bacteria. Now I mentioned that there are a lot of other things that also shut off the MMC pathway. Stress is another really major major contributing factor and stress eating can lead to a lot of snacking that also can inhibit the MMC pathway. So if you feel like you stress eat or you experience stress eating often, I highly recommend that you check out this video next so that you can learn some strategies on how to not stress eat. Also, if you love the science backed information on how to feel amazing again, make sure you subscribe right here, come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So make sure to turn on the notification bell as well. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.